Hello and welcome to Stream Tabulous. So I want to take a look at um, Kryter and probably do a couple of little videos on um, how to manipulate the AI diffusion to do certain things. Uh, talked about in the previous video on um, how to like add a cat if it's not doing it, putting a little blob in there. This one I want to talk about um, perhaps trying to remove an object which is in the background. Uh, Kryder doesn't have a decent AI background removal tool. And I want to take a look if we can find a way to um, manipulate that AI into doing something. So we'll go across to the intro and then we'll talk about um, doing that. Okay, welcome back. Now, I've just opened up the um, app roaming Kryter data file here. Um, and if you've watched how to uh, install it, you would have shown, I would have shown uh, about the Python Kryter file where your um, add-on goes into. Now, what we want to do is we're going to do something different. We're going to, I'm going to upload a file to my cloud that you can download and it's something that you'll be able to uh, take advantage of when you're using the AI. And it basically is a diffusion static. And I've talked about how the um, models don't really have a picture in it. And the way diffusion generally works is it creates a static image and then it uses that static image to build a unique image every time. Sometimes it gets caught in a loop. So we're gonna come into patterns and then I'm going to upload a file for you all, which will be one right here, one static diffusion. So this is the image here. So um, if you've done preview, you'll find it starts with static and then it will build its image based on that static. So this black section here, for example, might end up being a cat ear, a cat face, and a cat body. So it's kind of like one of those uh, magic eyes um, is the way I see it. Um, those old static images where you'd squint and try to distort your vision to actually uh, see it. So here we are. So it's simple as going into uh, the app data roaming crider, go into patterns, and drop the file in which I will link below onto uh, my cloud. Now, after you've done that, then you can launch Kryter. Okay, so now I've got Kryter open and I've loaded up the image that I'm going to be uh, working on. And for this system, it's rather old and rather slow. It's an old GTX 1070. Uh, so I'm not going to be able to use this at the full resolution. That is an advantage that Adobe has. Um, it has some secret source where when you're actually doing a render and you're selecting it, it's working in its AI model. The original model was trying trained on 512 by 512, stable diffusion, and the new model is trained on 124 by 124, which is an SDXL model. Uh, there are models coming out in the future in SDXL, which will support 2K and higher. So I believe you'll see that in Adobe. Adobe certainly has its benefits. Um, there's a lot of things that uh, it just has some magic source there that um, the Kryter diffusion doesn't have. So we need to know how to uh, manipulate the Kryter diffusion to do what we want. Uh, so I prefer Kryter diffusion. And the only reason I prefer the um, AI diffusion in Kryter is because I can actually select my models I love the live preview of being able to scribble. I think that's great for kids and um, things like that. And I generally like the tools. I like the fact that uh, it's a mix of what I know in Stable Diffusion and gives me the ability of a, um, a graphic user interface, which is uh, similar to Adobe or Corel. Um, each has their benefits. There's no doubt about that. Um, and of course, being on a pension, 
I love the fact that this is free and I'm very grateful to the open source people that have made it. Now, I want to come through. I'm going to come up to image here. I'm going to come down to scale to a new size because this is way too big for my system to handle. I'm going to come down to this one here and I'm just going to put a lower resolution of 1000. We might drop that a little bit lower just to uh, make the renders run faster. So I'm going to drop that to 800. And we have our image. Now we can always upscale this after. And uh, thanks to AI upscaling, we're not going to lose um, a lot of that detail, which is good. Now what I want to do is I want to get rid of this vehicle here. Now, no matter how I do it, if I select this vehicle... And I click on a 1.5 since this system will take forever on a SDXL. So I'll come through to absolute reality. And then I'm just going to put bush and trees. And then I'm going to hit generate. And um, yeah, this should not work. Now, of course, every time you uh, load up a model and you run Crater for the first time, it will take a moment to uh, start its render because it's got to load the model in the background. So Adobe's got some magic going for it. Um, if you've used Stable Diffusion, if you've used something like Automatic 11 or Easy Diffusion, uh, the in-paint, you're physically painting something. It's not, it's a selection, but it's painting that selection. I think what that is doing, and um, I'm taking some guesses with Adobe and uh, some guesses with, um, well, Stable Diffusion is the same across the board, Adobe's model, but with the way it works. I think when you're painting it, you're painting and it's generating static to actually create the image. Now, it doesn't matter what I do here, I'm going to end up with it reading the background and it going, well, there's a car there, and it's really ignoring this. So, and what I think is going on, and we'll unhide this. Now, if we come up to here, our pattern fills, we'll see our new one here, which is static diffusion. So we're going to select that. And we want to come over to settings, dockers. And there should be one down here, which is... I can't remember if it's tool options. Bear with me. Tool options is on. Ah. Tool options is up the top here. Okay. So if you don't have your tool options, I'm just going to bring that out if it lets me. It's not going to let me. It's locked in. There we go. Okay. This is our tool options. So if I come through and I uh, click on something like the paintbrush, you'll see that uh, it has some options there. If I click on the paint bucket, if you don't have that. You want to come up to Dockers. And you want to, so settings, dockers, tool options. You'll see it's disappeared. If I go settings, tool options, we get it here. Now we can drop that anywhere on here. So we can hold it over top and it will add a tab. So I will hold it over here and just drop it back there. And that gives me tool options and I can move that and lock it so it doesn't disappear. Once we have that tool options and we're on our bucket fill, we've selected our pattern as the static diffusion which will be uploaded um, on my cloud and you can download it from the link below we want to click on pattern okay let me change that we want a new layer so we're going to come up to layers new add a paint layer on that layer we're going to flood it with our static colors now from there we select our paint layer we can turn that preview back on. It won't matter as long as we're selected on that. Now we'll come back across. And we'll hit generate. Now this will be completely different because what it's going to do is it's going to look at that static and attempt to um, make an image out of nothing. And uh, this is the way the AI diffusion generally works. So in my mind uh, and the autistic thinking, it's like, well, if I put static there, uh, technically it should read it as a new render and then try to build it. But because it's looking at the outside of the image, it's building based on the overall image. 
as you can see that gives us our static there so we might want to come through and do some adjustments here now i mentioned this in the previous video for these selections that you may need to adjust them to do certain things so i'm going to show you this is actually good that i made this error we're going to reset it which is going to redo its padding and its blending sections and then when we run it again we'll see we don't get this shadow this shadow is what we ended up with a gray shadow when I was doing um, my previous video on how to um, add and change objects. And what I found uh, after doing that video, and I put it in the notes that I modified underneath the, um, the video, is that padding sometimes needs to be left as its default. Sometimes I do need to adjust it and change it, but for the most part when it's on its default, it blends in a lot better to the actual surrounding information. So we'll give this a moment. There we go. So we can see here that we've got some beautiful blends with it. So there's some padding issues, but uh, overall it's actually blended exceptionally well. And we can see that's removed it. So that is how I'd recommend to do it. Now, if we just drop that off again, and we'll just select this area, and we'll select a bit more of the outside of it. Now, what I find is, depending on your model that you use, you'll get um, different renders again. Now, this is a large model. This one's 6 gig, uh, but it is a 1.5 model. So this is going to take a little bit to render, and we're going to click on that. Oh. But this is the advantage um, and what I like about using this over Adobe is depending on the artwork that you're doing, if you're doing animations or something like that, you can actually put the model in which is best suited to work with your art style. Um, to what I can tell from Adobe and when I played with it, and I only played with it for the week that it dropped out of um, or become paid over here. And that was before the November the 1st date. Um, and when I contacted Adobe, they said, well, it's a rollout. It's by the 1st of November and some countries will be affected first. So I found myself paying up for it and I think it was still in beta. Um, someone said that the selection tool worked in Adobe uh, or does now. Um, I thought it was a snap. So perhaps it was when it was in the beta and when I first uh, paid for it. And um, I assume there's a lot of implements to it. And I certainly hope they've fixed the white renders. There was a lot of renders I was doing where it was just coming up with white pictures. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, um, that bad experience put me off it. And uh, yeah, I'll take free over paid any day of the week, especially when um, the subscription is enough to upgrade my hardware and get a... Um, use this for free and get better renders and faster renders by doing that. And as I said, as the models evolve, it will be better. And SDXL models, uh, if you're able to use them, understand language better. That is an advantage with the Adobe's model training. Uh, it has a better language model in there, which is associated with the diffused images that it's done. So it has more of an idea of what you're actually saying when you put the word remove in. So we can see here, this one's got a, a bit of a um, artistic style to it. And of course, these are Australian trees as well. So I highly doubt many models are trained with the Australian uh, trees. So we can come down to realistic vision and we can press render again. When you're on Civity AI, look for models which are suited to what you're doing. Most of the models that I've selected are for uh, photo restoration. So I'm looking at um, skin textures, eyes, uh, hand details, um, facial details, facial hair, um, hair itself. I'm not looking at uh, nature. So with this one, you'd be better off going into Civity AI and looking for models which are uh, more suited to the style of nature that you're actually working on. So that's something to keep in mind. There we go. We can see there we're getting fantastic uh, images that are blending in. So you could um, drop some of the saturation down on that, which would uh, blend it a lot more. So we could dip 
Okay, so yeah, you can come through and you can adjust the um, the saturation to that to bring it into the Australian sort of uh, muddled up colours that we have over here of um, no real greens. So that gives you an idea um, of how to use it. There's a lot of information here in the rocks of static and colours. So I'm just curious if I put reflective water in. Will it work as good as Adobe? Adobe was really good for doing reflective water where it was reading the rest of the scene and doing it. Um, and then depending on how models are made and how that interface works, it can be hit and miss. So um, easy diffusion. I've done the, um, the water, the reflective water, and it's worked exceptionally well. Uh, this uses Comfy AI in the background. Um, depending on the workflow they've loaded up as well can affect the way that it works with the overall image. So uh, this is more my curiosity. And um, yeah, you'll notice I've left it as 100% as well. Uh, you may want to drop that level down. Um, you wouldn't really want to drop it down when you're working on the static because of the... You, then the static will start to actually show up on your image, so you don't want to do that. I haven't tested it on uh, buildings yet. I've only tested it on nature. So you can comment below on uh, if this method is uh, working well for you. I do hope that um, that Kryter gets out there more. That's actually quite nice. So that we come through and we do this. We hit apply, which adds our layer here, and then we can come down to here, and then we can apply that as another layer, and then we have our reflective uh, water in here. So it doesn't look half bad. I mean, a question where uh, some of these reflections are coming in from, um, but nonetheless, we could come through and easily clean that out if we wanted to, or just leave it. I don't think at a first glance anyone would... Um, pick up on it unless they're uh, worked with a lot of photography and uh, they got eyes like uh, perhaps us that are uh, doing this sort of thing. So that 100% when you're working on your static image. So I'm going to put that up in the link below to download that static pattern off my cloud. And you just want to come through and drop that in the patterns of your uh, Crider data folder, uh, as I showed in the beginning. And hopefully that guy will help you guys actually um, remove elements uh, from a photo that you're actually working on. And of course, some of um, the way I'm describing things is a, uh, a logical guess from patterns that I see, uh, which is something with autism, you see patterns. And I see when I'm running Stable Diffusion, I see that uh, when it builds an image, it throws down static and seems to uh, mesh and then create other static over top of that until it builds up its image to get its uniqueness. And um, I found in this application that perhaps putting down the cap, for example, and the previous one, the white blob, that that helps the AI and control what you're actually doing. And then that leads me to uh, mention the static in the previous um, video. And uh, this is the static that I talk about. I did notice in one of the forums that someone did mention that putting down color actually helped. And they mentioned that the diffusion works by static as well, which led me to, well, I'll create a, a flood color and uh, use it in this manner. So there it is. Um, that's my method for removing a object and uh, using that static. And hopefully this helps you out. And if it does, comment below. And of course, like, share, and get the bell on. And share this video to um, you know your other social medias and get the word out. I think the more people that learn about the open source uh, Kryter, um, or Krita, would be a good thing. Once more people learn about it and they learn about the AI diffusion, which is on GitHub, which means someone can clone the idea and change it further and get new plugins, 
with more tools in it, uh, such as perhaps selecting an area where it's automatically doing that um, flood and like a scripted steps to render um, might be something we could see. Uh, and then we might actually see tools which are AI removal tools implemented in it. I think it's exciting to see um, something that is free and open source where the person that's made the plugins, one person to best my understanding, and I'll leave uh, a link to their um, Reddit below. So perhaps you can go in, find some of their comments and thank them for their plugin. The more people that actually thank them rather than the artists that hound and say this is a bad thing because they don't understand how AI works, the more support that he gets, the more he would be motivated to work on it further is what my hopes would be. So yeah, go over and uh, leave some positive feedback for the creator of that uh, plugin for sure. And I will see you in the next Stream Tabulous video. Thank you for watching my video and sticking around to the end. If you like my videos, it'd really help me out if you could like and subscribe. It helps the YouTube algorithm to push my videos out there to more viewers, which in turn helps me and helps everyone. So thank you for watching my video and hanging around to the end, and I will see you in the next video.